Hi, Pep. Pep, what's going on? Yo, good morning, Patrick. Good morning, everybody out there. Listen, I got to start off by giving you and all the KCAL Rockers a big apology. I have to apologize on this Monday morning because for the last several weeks, I came in here coming in hot saying there was not a good team in the Western Conference NBA playoffs. There was not a dominant team. There was no team to be scared of. Like It was wide open. Any team could win it. The Lakers could go all the way. Who knows? Maybe the Clippers would stay healthy and go all the way. I was wrong, man. I apologize. The Denver Nuggets are that good. They are the number one seed for a reason. I thought they were a weak, watered-down, diet version of a number one seed, and I was wrong. I've been wrong for several weeks. The Denver Nuggets are that good. They lead the Lakers 3-zip in the Western Conference Finals. And Patrick, I apologize to you and everybody else out there. The Denver Nuggets are that good. Well, you can kind of see how their formula worked. For a minute, I thought maybe it was the altitude that was really affecting the <laughs> Lakers. But you're right. They just are good. And it takes two lots of times. And they have Jokic and they have Murray. And, man, do they know how to use them. Yeah. I mean, we knew Jokic. You know, he's a NBA MVP. He's one of the top players in the league. Jamal Murray, I was like, I don't know if he's star status yet. Is he Is he just a, like a, a sidekick or is he another star player? He's convinced me. He's a star player. The guy can, you know, he can get buckets. He's kind of, I don't know if I want to say he's like Devin Booker, but he's hes similar, I would think, now to the level of where Devin Booker might have been a year or two ago. So, I don't know, man. Denver is way better than I thought. I looked at their roster. I looked at some of their victories, and I thought, yeah, they're not that good. They're not a dominant number one. I was wrong. I apologize. They are a dominant number one. If you're a Lakers fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about on this Monday morning because the Lakers will have to win four games in a row against the Nuggets if they're going to make the NBA Finals. Yep, so obviously it is possible, but it will be tough, if you will. And I think we need to remember, too, uh, we never see Denver. And that's part of the problem. You know what I mean? We don't see how good they are. And Jamal Murray has come back a long way. Big injury, all that stuff. So he's been waiting a long time. And I think you can see uh, the burning desire within him. You know what, and uh, and I'll say, I've been saying this for weeks, the fact that we were all excited about the Lakers and how they were playing at the end of the regular season, going into the playoffs, you know, for the Clippers, we thought they were going to get maybe get healthy. Of course, Golden State, they were the defending NBA champions. They had the whole band back together. They were going to be a factor. Then the Suns got Kevin Durant. We thought, well, the Suns are the team to beat in the Western Conference. With all that being said, lost in all the smoke, was the Denver Nuggets still hanging tight at number one? I'm like, man, there's too many good teams in the Western Conference. It's wide open. They're, they're all about the same. There's not a dominant team. And I, I, Again, I was wrong. The Denver Nuggets are that dominant. And when you look at the Lakers, I don't know how they fix the you know or find a solution of what Denver is doing to win four in a row man that seems like trying to you know climb a huge you know mountain at this point if you're the Lakers pretty tough man and it's really looking like a couple of teams that are just dogs are going to be lining up to go at it in the finals I mean we, we look like we might have the Miami Heat and then the the Denver Nuggets I mean we might have two very scrappy teams who knows it could be a very good finals yeah, I think, uh, you know, the NBA is probably thinking a Nuggets versus Heat NBA Finals. Like, nobody's going to be interested in that. But uh, oddly enough, I would be interested in that. That actually seems like a really good series. And you bring up the Miami Heat. They're up three zip on the Boston Celtics over the Eastern Conference. So unless there's some major collapse in these conference championship series, it's going to be the Miami Heat against the Denver Nuggets. And I know it doesn't sound as sexy as the Lakers versus the Celtics for the championship, but it's probably going to be the two best teams in the NBA if that happens. Yeah, and then a sidebar, I think this is like Pat Riley's 19th appearance to the finals or something like that. You know, as an executive, as a coach, it's some kind of record. You got that going for him. Jimmy Butler, obviously, the huge scrapper. I know we wouldn't let, you know, a lot of the, they love the New York, L.A. thing. They always go for it. <laughs> but this is how it's going to shape up. Yeah, a couple of years ago, we had... It was Milwaukee against Phoenix in the NBA Finals. And I thought that was fun. I thought that was a good Finals. And I know this not like major market teams, not big brand teams like the Lakers or the Knicks or the Celtics or the Bulls or some of those teams. But I thought it was a great NBA Finals. So barring something crazy happening, it looks like it's going to be the Denver Nuggets against the Miami Heat. And if you're a Lakers fan, 
Maybe Pat Riley uh, is a reason to root for Miami other than, hey, the, the Nuggets just beat us. Uh, let's let's have the Miami Heat go out there and beat the Nuggets. We don't want to see the Nuggets go all the way. So may, there, maybe there's that too if you've got some sour grapes like like I would as a Sacramento Kings fan. Yeah, uh, the really the only joy they can have right now is the Celtics laid an absolute egg and embarrassed themselves last night. Dude, bad. Right? Bad. Yeah, game three of their series was last night. They lost, I, I don't have the score in front of me, it was like 128 to 102 or something like that. They're just, they just look out of their league. And what's crazy about Miami is, you know, they're not a bad team, but they don't even have all their guys healthy. Like, they're getting this done, like, basically shorthanded. Two of their top scorers are out. Victor Oladipo's out. Tyler Hero's out. If you're an NBA fan, you, you'll probably recognize those names. But Jimmy Butler, man, like he is a bona fide star. You need a star player to carry your team, and Jimmy Butler. We knew, I know I've known he's been good. You know he's a good you know star player, but I didn't know he was like carry a team to the NBA Finals. Good. I, even I have been a little bit surprised how good he is. Well, because I think we're finding out that yeah, you can be talent is great, and Jimmy Butler he, he isn't the greatest shooter. He isn't. He's a good package, but you know what I mean. Yeah. He's not the greatest basketball player ever. But I think we're finding out an ingredient in being tough and making it through these playoffs is grit, yeah. and he has a ton of grit and a ton of heart, and those two factors can carry a team. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're watching it. We're living it right yeah. now. So yeah. it's been a lot of fun. So if it ends up being Miami against Denver, I would be perfectly fine with that. But each each of the the Lakers and the Celtics, man, they they got to erase a three zip hole, which does not look likely, not improbable, but does not look likely. In fact, I don't think it's ever happened in a conference championship series leading up to the NBA Finals. It's never happened. So never. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, and the other thing, Patrick, I want to bring up today, we had our another major on the golf tour this past weekend. Brooks Kepka winning the PGA Championship. It's his third PGA Championship title. It's his fifth major. And I knew Brooks Kepka was, you know, good. I think we're in an age of golf right now where there's a lot of good guys. Brooks Kepka, Jordan Spieth, John Rahm. Like, there's a lot of good guys. And I'm waiting for one of them to separate from the pack and be the star player. I thought it was going to be Dustin Johnson for a while. But who's going to be the star of the face of golf? And I, and I think Brooks Kepka. if you see the guy, he looks the part, man. He, he's this big, buff guy on the golf course. But now his fifth major, I think we got to start taking him seriously. Maybe he is the emerging star in golf. He is. And he also is the first live participant golfer to win a major. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about that because... If, if you follow the Live Golf Tour, you know all the guys are going to the Live Golf Tour because the payout is big. They offer a lot more money than the PGA Tour. So when he won the PGA Championship yesterday, Patrick, I actually looked it up. I was like, how much did he win as a winner? And it was $3.15 million to win the PGA Championship, right. which might ironically be a pay cut for a live tour victory for Brooks Kepka, but still it's a major. So obviously that carries a lot more weight in the world of golf as if you can win a weight major. So he did that. And I'm not saying, hey, if, if I could play a round of golf and win over $3 million, I would be a happy camper. But it was actually probably a pay cut for Brooks Kepka coming off the live tour. Ah, uh, man, it used to be like the old joke about college athletes before NIL, right? Like it, the, the the joke used to be, is he going to stay in college or is he going to take a pay cut and go to the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> right? and, now, and now it is true. Without naming names, I have recently uh, spoken with a college football player at a major Pac-12 school. I was like, hey, uh, I was kind of surprised you didn't declare for the NFL draft this past year. He's like, oh, no, I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm going to go back for one year in college. And I've got some yeah. some sponsors are going to take care of us. So I was like, See? oh, okay. <laughs> Man, it's the way it is. Uh, we will meet back up with our guy Pep on Thursday. Let's do a little predicting time. Will the Lakers be alive when we talk on Thursday? I think they win one. I think they at least get one in L.A. I can't go beyond that, but I think they get one. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they are still alive <laughs> when we talk on Thursday. Pep, tell me how to get your stuff. We're always alive on Inland Sports. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. we got the Inland Sports YouTube channel. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Pep. Perfect, my man.